When you think of LEGO games, you probably think of LEGO Batman, LEGO Star Wars, or maybe even LEGO Dimensions. But some LEGO games that are often overlooked are the ones released on the PlayStation Vita and other handhelds. So I recently copped a Vita and decided to platinum two games from my favorite LEGO franchise. LEGO Ninjago Nindroids and LEGO Ninjago Shadow of Ronin. I never got a chance to play either of these, let alone get their platinum trophies. So without further ado, let's start with LEGO Ninjago Nindroids. Nindroids is different from normal LEGO games. There are 31 levels that are much shorter than normal, and each has a set of 10 challenges to complete to get gold bricks. Nindroids also has a top-down perspective compared to the third-person camera. But what is the game about? Well, it covers the first five episodes of Ninjago's third season, Rebooted. Because of this, I won't go over the events of the story in case any of you want to watch the show for yourselves. I highly recommend it, by the way. It's pretty good for a kid's show. But to at least give some background, this takes place in a futuristic Ninjago city built by a man named Cyrus Borg. He gives the ninja weapons called Technoblades that they'll need to take down the Overlord virus that's in the city's systems. The first level has us escaping an elevator from Borg Tower. The level is pretty simple, just teaching me the basics of the game while the computer just roasts me for some reason. Bro, why is this computer just roasting me, bro? Holds a build, okay. Making yep. this harder than it needs to be. Shut up, bro. Oh. Uh, maybe she's right, especially after I encountered this hacking terminal that I struggled to use at first. Use a touch screen to. Can I? Can I even do that? Wait, can I even use the touch screen? How do you? What? How do you use this? All right, I figured out the issue. I needed to turn on a setting. I did not know that. There we go. Yeah, I'm. I've never used a PSTV, a PS Vita. I've, ne I've never used any of this stuff. Yeah, I'm actually using a PlayStation TV so that I can record this video, and that's why I struggle with the touchpad. Sorry for clickbaiting a little bit, but it's a good thing I figured it out because I need to hack nine more terminals for this trophy. The next two levels just had us continuing to escape Borg Tower, and during the third level, I learned something awesome. Oh great, I'm getting chumped. Charge up your power meter by fighting enemies. Use the energy in your power meter to per Oh, is that what- Oh. Oh, Spin Jutsu! Let's go! Oh, but the LEGO Ninjago movie video game couldn't do that. This game is automatically better, bro. After we escaped, Zane was able to use his Technoblade to hack this copter which led into the third level. It was a very easy level where we just had to shoot down a bunch of enemies, and I was able to do this at the end. Dang! We got six! Seven! Eight! Dang, bro! I got eight out of nine out of ten challenges. I just needed higher accuracy and the elevators. Honestly, I'm gonna go for that. Yeah, let's retry. I wasn't able to get the accuracy, but I was able to destroy the elevators and get my first trophy. Hey, spirit change! First trophy. I don't know what that's for, but let's go. That's for collecting 100,000 studs, and I will also get trophies for 1 million and 100 million studs. After one more level, I encountered Borg, who was corrupted by the Overlord. Where are your manners? It's not polite to hit a girl. Yeah, you tell him, Wu. His fight was simple, I just had to take down Nindroids, dodge machinery, and attack the Overlord, and after I defeated him, I got another trophy. City Square! Let's go. That trophy is for unlocking the hub, which is where I'll buy items and do other things as well. You don't get many trophies during the story, and since I'm trying to avoid spoilers, there isn't much to go over. I was having fun though. I wasn't expecting much with this being on the Vita, but it was still fun to play through, and it felt fresh since it wasn't like all the other LEGO games. And being a Ninjago fan, it was nice to play through all of these scenes that I've watched so many times, and it makes me wish we had a full-scale Ninjago game. But after I reached the halfway point, I finally got another trophy. Oh, halfway there! Hey, we got a trophy, let's go. The next story trophy wouldn't pop until the final level, but I was able to get other trophies throughout, like defeating 25 laser shooting ninjroids, defeating 10 enemies with slam attacks, unlocking every J variation, and smashing 500 objects. The final level has us defeating the Overlord, who turned into this giant tentacle monster. Don't ask, just watch the show. We just had to tie the tentacles down while catching light to hurt him, and after Kai caught the light, I finished the story and unlocked his final variation. That's the end. 
Wildfire. And Black Bell. Let's go. That's half of the season done. They literally don't even do the rest of the season. That's literally only episode 5 and we're done. With the story done, my next goal was to complete the dojo. The dojo is owned by the GOAT. Grand Sensei Dareth. He hosts the easy difficulty, while Garmadon hosts the medium difficulty, and Wu hosts the hard difficulty. I need to complete all difficulties for their respective trophies. It's nothing insane though, I just need to fight hordes of ninjroids, and the higher difficulties spawn different types of ninjroids, mechs, and savages as well. I got close to failing a few times on hard, but overall the dojo wasn't too bad. I was also able to get a few extra trophies here, but I'll explain those after the dojo trophies pop. So here are all the trophies. Maybe I get to fight Dareth at the very end. Like, maybe after all these guys. Or not. Alright. Ninth Q! <laughs> you suck, bro. Let's go. Junked. Okay, that's for killing 500 ninjroids. Master Spinjitsu. Okay, that's for killing 100 enemy with uh, Spinjitsu. And 5th Q! Let's go, we got three trophies for one thing, let's go. There we go. That's all the dojo's done. There we go. Undeterred, uh, that's 50 of some type of thing. First Dan, let's go. Yeah, we made some great progress, chat. Past me already explained Junked and Master of Spinjitsu, but Undeterred is for defeating 50 shield-wielding ninjroids. And for some reason, this trophy popped after I left the dojo. Piggyback? Uh, I don't know what that's for, but nice. That one is for defeating 20 mechs by jumping on their back. Now that the dojo is done, my goal is to complete all of the challenges. There are five types of challenges that are on every level, which are simply completing the level, getting true ninja on the level, collecting the mini kit, beating the time trial, and a multi-challenge, which consists of three challenges in one. There's also a trophy for completing all of those. The other five challenges can range from completing the level as a certain character, beating the level without dying, collecting a red brick, and many other things. On the topic of red bricks, these work differently than normal. For some reason, you can only select three red bricks per level, so you have to be strategic about what you use. I'm not really a fan of this. Another thing I'm not a fan of is how character switching works. The game gives you a set assortment of characters, and you can't switch them out during the level. Here's an example of that. Do I have a skeleton selected? Nope. Maybe I can use a different character. Use skeleton to walk through the electricity. Why not just use an android? How about that? I don't know. <laughs> nope, I literally need a skeleton. Alright. Alright. Oh, return to hub. Alright, let's try that again. But this time, let's actually bring a skeleton in. Still with statues. Still with oh, please tell me out the space, man. I don't. Okay, I'm gonna have to redo the level again, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna have to redo this level again since I can't just use every character. Going back to the multi-challenges, these reward me with characters after completion, some of them being variants of the ninja, so I got trophies for getting all Cole variants, all Lloyd variants, and all Zane variants during this. I also got other character trophies from these, which were all of the snakes and all of the skeletons. Besides those, I got a bunch of miscellaneous trophies as well, which were the two stud trophies, the hacking trophy, defeating 25 enemies with grab attacks, Building 50 items. Also, during that level, my game bugged out. What am I wait? What, what am I waiting for? I think I need to switch to Pixel or something. I don't know why she's still just here, but I think I just need to go over here. Uh, is the level good? I hope I didn't break the level. Chat, I think the level broke. I think the level might have broke, cause she's supposed to be gone, but she's just standing here. All right, well, restart level. My system is compromised. Yeah, I know. I know, woman. This time, don't compromise my game. How about that? Okay, there we go. She worked this time. Yeah, she, 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 like I said, she was literally supposed to dip after those ninjoids were done. And finally, smashing 25 fire hydrants. Overall, the challenges weren't too bad. The time attacks were easy now that I was actually going for them, and everything else was just random tasks that I sometimes had to redo, but they were kind of fun. But after two streams worth of grinding, I finished the final multi-part challenge and got another trophy. Hey, multi-talented. And hoarder. Oh, I collected all mini kits. Let's go. However, the final challenge was actually annoying. The objective was simple, dodge every single missile attack from the mech dragon. 
My problem was that towards the latter half of the level, the dragon started to spam them like crazy, and it was tough to avoid them. Also, for some reason, sometimes whenever I pressed the bumpers to swerve, it wouldn't register, causing moments like this to happen. I, I pressed R1! I literally pressed R1 and it didn't count! It literally did not take the inputs! No, my R1 button is fine. It works perfectly fine. It's this game, bro. This challenge was pretty unfair compared to all of the other ones, and I did not expect a struggle like this on a freaking LEGO game. But after multiple attempts, this happened. Finally, bro! Finally! Sheesh, man, that was so annoying. A new challenger. Finally, what a stupid challenge, bro. That was dumb. I don't know who decided to put that in a LEGO game, but they need to be fired if they haven't been fired already. That was terrible. Now that all of the challenges were done, I had a few things to clean up to 100% the game. I got the final miscellaneous trophies, which were stomping on 50 objects in a mech, and throwing 10 enemies into the fire. Now I just had collectible stuff left. I first bought every red brick. Yep, full house. Let's go. And then used every single one to complete a level. Once again, I can only use three at a time, so I had to restart the shortest level in the game a few times to finish this up. I guess I wasn't the last one. Let me find the other one. Oh, never mind. I love red bricks. Let's go. The final collectible trophy was for purchasing every character. Oh no, Cryptor. Like pebbles in a pond, let's go. All right, we got all the characters. And dedication, that's 100% the game. <laughs> I don't get why that trophy popped late, but at least I got the clip. And to end off the platinum, I built the golden dragon. Here we go, this should be it. This should be it right here. The golden dragon, let's go! Golden dragon and... Master of Ninjago, let's go, bro! Man, that is sick, bro. Fitting that I'm Lloyd for this too, that is goaded. That was probably the most fitting end to the plat. I have no idea how much time I put into this platinum since there is no hour counter on a Vita or in-game, so I don't know. All I know is that I enjoyed this game. It was a lot better than I thought it would be. Highly recommend if you have a Vita. If you can get your hands on a Vita, get this game. It's really good. And it feels good to have a Ninjago game that is based on the show. But now let's move on to the other game that's based on the show. LEGO Ninjago Shadow of Ronin. This game was released a year after Nindroids and in the same year that Ninjago Seasons 4 and 5 were released. I remember seeing trailers for this game and I wished I had a handheld to play it. Heck, the theme on my PS3 is this game's cover art, but let's actually get into it. Shadow of Ronin is similar to Nindroids, but it's more like normal LEGO games. There are 30 levels that are still short and each level now has 5 challenges instead of 10. This game's story takes place after Season 4, but it's not canon, so I'll be talking about it. The story is split into 10 chapters with 3 levels in each one, and the first level starts with this. <laughs> There's a freaking intro! No! I don't know if I can play the audio, but this is good. They have the little intro in here. In here. That was sick. They literally have the intro in here. That's awesome. The story actually gets started with the ninja sneaking onto Master Chen's island, who was the main villain of Season 4. Jay gets caught in a trap because he's Jay, and we needed to save him. After we saved him, we got chased by an anachondrite crusher, which was easy to avoid, and I completed a challenge for doing that. But then we got jumped by enemies, and I got to try out the new combat. I think it's time we showed them some spin jitsu. I'm down, bro. Okay, we hold down. Ooh. I have the storm. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. I already like this game, bro. I already like this. Once we dealt with them, we opened a door that led to Chen's dungeon. We dodged a bunch of traps, but we ended up falling into a pit, and people who watched Season 4 will know what this pit is, but it's here that I got my first trophy, simply for collecting a purple stud. Ooh, what is fine? The purple one. We continued through the dungeon, making it to Chen's staff of elements, where we got ambushed by a giant serpent, and this happened. Ah, my pants! 
What are you laughing for? Uh, That's not what happened at all. Wait, what? This is a story? That was a flashback. I didn't even realize. In the present day, Wu sent the ninja to train with Dareth's new students, but unbeknownst to everyone, including Dareth, these guys were evil. After we dealt with them, we encountered the main villain, Ronin. Fun fact, this was Ronin's first appearance before he appeared in Season 5, but remember, this isn't canon, so the appearances aren't connected. Anyway, we went after Ronin, eventually forming the Tornado of Creation to create a magnet to disarm him, but for one final trick, he steals the ninja's powers and memories, which ends the chapter. Selective Memory Wu tells the ninja that Ronin used a weapon called the Obsidian Glaive to steal their powers, and to reverse it, they had to get their own Obsidian weapons. This took us to Cryptarium Prison to talk to the guy who originally owned the glaive since he knows the locations of the other weapons. But it turns out he can't tell us their locations, but we could drink the tea of inside to figure them out. This will later take us to the Toxic Bogs, but we couldn't go there without Nia's grapple device, so after going through Crash Course Canyon, we went to Jay's parents' junkyard to find her. However, some Serpentine followed us, but we dealt with them and moved on to the next chapter. Snakes in the Sand as I mentioned earlier, we went to the Toxic Bogs to get a blueberry needed to brew the tea, and once we knew the locations of the weapons, we set out on the journey to get them, starting with Cole's Obsidian Scythe. Once a ninja gets their obsidian weapon, it allows me to use their powers whenever I want, which is something that I wish was the case in Ninjoids, because seeing scenes like this is dope. Now that we had the scythe, we just needed to escape the Caves of Despair and end the chapter. Earth to Cold the next weapon we went for was Kai's Obsidian Sword, which was in the Fire Temple. We got it during the first level of the chapter, but of course, it wouldn't be that easy, because during the next level, I got into a boss fight against Ronin. The fight was simple, I just needed to throw rocks at Ronin and then melt his thrusters with Kai and repeat that one more time. That wasn't gonna take him down though, so Kai had a great idea. Break the rock that everyone is standing on. He does this a lot in the show by the way. I mean, it kinda worked out, but Ronin was able to escape, leaving us to die, but we were able to use pieces of his jetpack to make our own jetpacks, allowing us to escape, even though my jetpack malfunctioned and I had to slide down the rest of the volcano. Volcanic Activity Our next destination was the Ice Temple to get Zane's Obsidian Psy. We had to complete a puzzle here, and when we were done, we were able to get the Psy, but we were ambushed by an Ice Serpent. To defeat it, I needed to freeze the bubbling water that would pop up around it, which would form an ice hand to hold it in place, allowing me to shoot it with Kai's fire. I needed to repeat this a few times, all while it's breaking the terrain and launching new attacks over time. After we defeated it, we would have been going for Jay's Obsidian Nunchucks next, but for some reason, Ninjoids were attacking Ninjago City, so that came first, but at least I got my trophy. Chill out. I headed to Ninjago City as Samurai X, dealing with every ninjoid in my path, and following that, Cyrus Borg told us that we needed Jay's lightning to destroy the ninjoid's power source, and of course, that meant it was time to get Jay's nunchucks. We flew to the floating ruins to get them, and as a side note, if any of my Ninjago fans have been paying attention, all of the locations we went to are the same locations where the ninja got their golden weapons in the show. That's a dope detail. Although they do kind of mess up the details when they pronounce Nia's name like this. Naya, I got my memory. Naya! Why do they say Naya? Anyway, we got the nunchucks and formed another tornado of creation to destroy the power source, and we thought everything was good until the ninjoids got back up thanks to some new device Ronan got, but thankfully, we were able to escape. Fully charged. Master Wu informs us that the device Ronin has is one of the four elemental forges, and that we need to get the rest of them first before he can potentially bring back Master Chen. So we split into two teams to get the forges of fire and ice. There isn't much to say about these levels, but after we got both of the forges, Ronin ambushed us again, leading to another sliding level. After completing it, to my surprise, Ronin had captured everyone else and got the forge of earth. Darius tries to save them, but he fails, of course and Ronan escapes with the forges, but there's still a chance. Not my vault. Ronan still needed something called the Primal Fulcrum, and Wu tells us that we must destroy it to stop him. So we finally go get Lloyd to help us, and we also find his mom, who also happens to be looking for the Fulcrum. I wonder why. 
We later had to make our way through Hiroshi's labyrinth to find the Fulcrum's chamber, where we needed to find dragon eggs to deactivate the spinning trap. Once the trap was deactivated, we formed another tornado of creation to make a device to destroy the door, but when we tried to destroy the Fulcrum, we got trapped and betrayed by Lloyd's mom, who was being controlled by Ronin, and he was able to take the Fulcrum. Finders Keepers we went to the old monastery to infuse our elemental dragons with the Fulcrum Guardian souls, which would allow them to take us to Ronin on Chen's Island. During this first level, I finally ended up getting a non-story trophy. Ooh, bad breath. That trophy is for defeating three enemies in a row with Dragon Breath. After that level, I got a fun level where I got to assault the island with Jay's mech, and following it, we made it to Chen's palace, where I defeated my 100th enemy with Spinjitsu, and defeated my 50th enemy with the finisher. We continued through the palace, reaching Ronin, but he was able to unite the fulcrum with the forges, opening up a portal, but it's not over yet. Bittersweet Memories Before I went into the final chapter, I got another trophy upon reaching it. Ooh, Dragon's Eye View. Uh, is that for? I don't know what that's for. <laughs> I don't know what that's for. I know what that's for, Shardix. It's for exploring all of the areas on the map. We made our way through Ronin's portal, and during the next level, we had to build a device to actually make it up to Ronin. This device was the final scrap build I needed, which I had been working towards throughout the whole game. Scrap that. The final level had us fighting a giant elemental golem that Ronan made, and I had to shoot him with all the different elements to defeat him. To finish him off, I performed my final tornado of creation. Tornado of creation. Ronan was able to get away, but our goal was to destroy the fulcrum, so we successfully did that and saved Ninjago. Out of this world. And level with me. I really enjoyed this story. It felt like I was going through an adventure that the show would tell, and even though the characters had different voice actors, they still felt really similar to their show counterparts. Although, I wonder why they limited this game to the Vita. If they would have put a little more into this game, it easily could have passed for a fully-fledged LEGO game. But now that the story is done, I had to complete all of the challenges. The challenges were easier than Nindroids, and I got a lot done during my playthrough, so it didn't take nearly as long as Nindroids either. The main challenges I had to do were just the Collector challenges, which are for collecting characters and red bricks, and the True Ninja challenges, which are just for getting True Ninja on everything. On the topic of red bricks and stuff, let me just tell you how much better this game is compared to Nindroids for this. So, number one, you're not limited on how many red bricks you can use anymore. I don't know why Nindroids did that. Number two, you can use any character at any time, just like normal LEGO games. And number three, which is something that really surprised me, you can buy characters and red bricks in the level. You don't have to go back to the hub to buy them. This is probably the most underrated feature in this game, and I don't know why LEGO games don't do this more often. Outside of that, there isn't much to talk about with the challenges, but I was able to get a few trophies while doing them. These consisted of smashing through 20 objects while using a vehicle boost, unlocking all skeletons, defeating 10 enemies as Dareth, and unlocking all of the ninja. So here are all of the challenge trophies, except for the true ninja trophy, as my footage of it got corrupted, but this is the last level, and you see I got true ninja on it. But thankfully, I have footage of the other two trophies. Ooh, Ronin Samurai, nice. Not so humble collector, hey, let's go. Hey, super effective! Challenge accepted! Let's go! Now that the challenges are done, I have a few miscellaneous trophies before I unlock the final characters. Let's rapid fire through them, starting with defeating 10 enemies as Snike, hypnotizing 10 enemies, defeating 6 enemies in a row with missiles, and performing 10 takedowns from stealth. To get the rest of the characters, I needed to destroy objects around Ninjago Island. After destroying 5 of each object, I'd get a character. Destroying these objects naturally got me the trophy Burn Nation for destroying 10 objects. Oh, never mind. Burn Nation. So, I got the final tournament character. Tournament of Elements. The final Nindroid. Nindroids 2.0. And the final Serpentine. Character Party. Slitherpit. And... Master of Spin Jitsu. Let's go. Let's just buy all the characters. Let's not 
leave them completely uh, unpurchased. Let's at least get 100%. Alright, that should be 100%. There we go, 100% now. Now we're completely done with the game. I can actually see my hours for this game, and it says it took me 7 hours and 49 minutes. I don't know if that's fully true. I think that is. I think that sounds accurate. So, yeah, 7 hours. Almost 8. And that is both of the Ninjago games on the Vita Platinum. I really enjoy both of these, but I prefer Shadow of Ronin over Ninjoids. As a huge Ninjago fan, these were extra special to play through, especially since they follow the show, unlike the movie video game. There's only one other LEGO Vita game to Platinum besides like ports like LEGO Batman 2, and that's Chima, so if you want to see me Platinum that, give this video a lot of support. But I hope you all enjoyed the video, if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to see me Platinum the LEGO Ninjago movie video game, that video is on the end screen, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.